In this video, you're going to learn about what circadian biologists call an organism's free running period, or FRP. An FRP is the length of time it takes an organism to complete its daily activities and begin them again in the absence of any environmental cues regarding the time of day. You'll learn how to define the FRP more precisely when you watch the video on naming conventions. In this video, you'll also learn about Ashoff's rules. These are a set of generalizations about FRPs in different organisms under different conditions. It's important to say at the beginning here that Ashoff's rules are really just generalizations. They have exceptions, but they hold true in most cases and they're very useful. Let's start now with our first topic, FRPs. To show you what an FRP is, we're going to start with this actogram. This actogram looks pretty messy, mainly because it's showing you real data from a live bird. Just like in any other actogram, here each row is representing one day's worth of data. The black marks show when the bird was active. You ought to be able to tell that the bird is entrained to a light-dark cycle since the onset of activity occurs once every 24 hours. Right now this actogram is single plotted. Let's go ahead and double plot all the data. So we're going to take the record of the second day's activity, which is shown here on the second row, and we're going to duplicate it on the right-hand side of the first row. And we'll do this for every row of data. So instead of each line showing only 24 hours of data, each line will show 48 hours of data. In this actogram, the bird has been exposed to a daily cycle of 12 hours of light followed by 12 hours of darkness. This kind of lighting schedule is often summarized with the label LD1212. Lights on for 12 hours, followed by darkness for 12 hours. You've seen actograms labeled like this before. Now we're going to add something new. We're going to specify the illuminance or intensity of the light. When the lights were on for 12 hours, the bird was exposed to light at an intensity of 500 lux. This isn't too bright. On a sunny day, you'll see light at more than 50,000 lux. 500 lux is about as bright as indoor office lighting, or it's about as bright as a smartphone screen, like an iPhone, if you turn the brightness up. Of course, when the bird was in darkness for 12 hours, it was exposed to no light at all, or light at zero lux. Now we're ready to learn what a free-running period is and what Ashoff's rules are. We're going to put this bird through a couple experiments, and we'll extend the actogram as we go to show what happens to the bird's activity rhythms under different conditions. We're going to need a lot more space, so let's shrink this actogram down. This is our starting point, where the bird has been entrained to an LD cycle for about 30 days. Now here's the first step of our experiment. We're going to remove the lighting schedule and put the bird into constant darkness, which we mark DD, darkness followed by darkness. Here's a single plotted actogram showing how the bird's activity rhythms change. Let's go ahead and double plot the data. You can see that the onset of activity occurs later and later each day so that the actogram drifts to the right. Notice that it does so in a very regular way. The bird's activity is still rhythmic, it's just that its rhythm isn't exactly 24 hours anymore. It's slightly more than 24 hours. But the key point is that when the bird is freed from the influence of external cues, its biological clock still runs with a cyclical period. The length of time it takes for the cycle to repeat is the bird's free running period, or FRP. We ran some calculations and under these conditions, this bird's FRP was estimated to be close to 26 hours. You'll often see the Greek letter tau used as a symbol for free running period, and so we could also say that tau is close to 26 hours. When we talk about an organism's rhythmic behaviors under constant conditions, we say the organism is free running. Now that you know the basics of FRPs, it's time to talk about Ashoff's rules. FRPs tend to be different in different kinds of organisms. Ashoff's first general rule truly describes the case we've just discussed. The rule is that, in general, a diurnal organism placed in constant darkness has a free-running period of greater than 24 hours. That's just what we've seen in the case of this diurnal bird. Ashoff's second general rule is that the opposite is true in nocturnal organisms. In general, a nocturnal organism placed in constant darkness has a free-running period of less than 24 hours. There are two more of Ashoff's rules to cover in this video. To introduce them, let's go back to our bird and let's do a few more experiments. First, we're going to put the bird in a schedule of constant light, which we symbolize as LL, light followed by light. First, we're going to put the bird in 24 hours of light at 50 lux. 50 lux light is pretty dark. Think of a lecture hall with most of the lights dimmed down for a presentation. Now here's the actogram showing the bird's activity under those conditions. Before we discuss these data, let's do a couple more experiments. Let's put the bird into constant light at 500 lux, and we'll collect our data, 
And finally, we'll put the bird into constant light at 2000 lux, and we'll collect these data. You've probably already realized that under all these different conditions, the bird is still free running. Putting the bird into constant light removes any external time cues, just like putting it into constant darkness. But you can see that the free running period changes under some of these different conditions. In DD, the free running period is quite long, and the actogram drifts sharply to the right. Under 50 lux, the free running period is a little shorter, but still longer than 24 hours. The actogram drifts less sharply to the right. Under 500 lux, the free running period is a little bit shorter again, but still longer than 24 hours. There isn't any significant difference between light at 500 lux and light at 2000 lux. They have roughly the same effect on free running period. Remember that next time you use your cell phone at night. These experiments help us illustrate the next pair of Ashoff's rules. Our experiments with the diurnal bird illustrate the third rule. In general, if you take a diurnal organism like our bird and let it free run under constant light, then increasing the intensity of the light will decrease the free running period. Ashoff's fourth rule is that the opposite is true in nocturnal organisms. In general, if you take a nocturnal organism and let it free run under constant light, then increasing the intensity of the light will increase the free running period. That's it for this video on FRPs and Ashoff's rules. Click here to watch the next video in this series.